All right, in this video, I'm gonna cover the lesson that you will be missing in class today if you're at EMCC. We're gonna be on page seven in our booklet that we've been working on called Linear and Exponential Sequences. So we're gonna talk about exponential functions and we've been talking about them. They're very similar to geometric sequences. Exponential functions have this look, a times b to the x. Geometric sequences look like this, the first number times this common ratio to the n minus one. So they are very similar. The main thing for exponential functions, the rate of change is not constant. For a line, you go up by two, up by two, up by two. Exponential functions, since you're multiplying, you're gonna be going up by like times two, times two, but it, the, so if I keep multiplying by two, this goes up by two, this goes up by four, this goes up by eight, that's not constant. The variable is in the exponent. So the letter X is in the exponent. So that's what makes this exponential. There's two different types of exponential functions we're gonna investigate. Exponential growth and exponential decay. So this is the general form for an exponential function. There's two things that we're interested in, just like with the line slope and y-intercept, but A is gonna be our initial or our starting value. Starting value or initial value. And B is what we're gonna call the base. B is the base. So tying this back into geometric sequences, A1 is the first number of the sequence and R is the common ratio. So very similar, initial value, first number, common ratio, base, and they both have the letter and the exponent. So we notice that the two forms are very similar. And the conclusion is basically a geometric sequence is an application of an exponential function Okay, so what I wanna do here, we're gonna look at how to tell if you're experiencing exponential growth or exponential decay. And the way that we do that is we look specifically at the base. And think about it this way, if you multiply by something larger than one, if I multiply by two, three, four, 1.5, 2.5, the numbers are gonna get larger and larger. So that re represents exponential growth. So if that base is a number larger than one, greater than one, here's an example, y equals three times 1.4 raised to the x. That base 1.4, that's bigger than one, that's exponential growth. Exponential decay is if your base is between zero and one. So if the base is between zero and one. That's exponential decay. We're not gonna worry about negatives at all. So if I have say two times 0 0.7 to the X power, this is exponential decay because the base is less than one, but greater than zero. Okay, moving on to page eight. This next section just asks you to determine is the following equation exponential growth or decay. So we're going to look at the base. That's how we're going to make a decision. So here the base is 3 divided by 2. If you divide the 3 by 2, you get 1.5. Remember, growth is if the base is bigger than 1. Decay is if the base is between 0 and 1. So here this would be exponential growth. B, the base is 1.2. This is larger than one. This is exponential growth. What I'd encourage you to do right now, pause the video and see if you can answer C, D, and E. C, the base is two, so this is growth. D, one divided by four is 0 0.25. This is exponential decay. And E, the base is 0.5. So that's less than one, but greater than zero. That would be exponential decay. 
The next section asks you to identify the initial value. Can you cross off growth or decay factor? I'm going to refer to this as the base and then the growth or decay rate, and that will be new. All right, so for this first question, growth or decay, you're going to look at the base like we just did above, 1.8. This is exponential growth. The initial value or the starting value is 3. This we're changing to the base. The base is 1.8. Now to find the factor of growth or decay, in this case it's, it's growth, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this decimal to a percent. So if I want to go from a decimal to a percent, I'm going to multiply by 100. So 1 1.8 times 100 is 180 percent. We're always starting at 100 percent. That's where we're starting, 100 percent. If I'm now at 180 percent, I've grown by 80 percent. This is 80% growth. In the second example, growth or decay, I'm going to look at the base, 0.8, that's decay. The initial value is 9. Crossing this out, the base, the base is that 0 0.8. And to find the, the rate, same thing that I did before, I'm going to convert this decimal to a percent by multiplying by 100. So 0.8 times 100 is 80 percent. We always start with 100. So if I had 100 percent and now I'm down to 80 percent, the rate is what's what's gone. I lost 20 percent because there's only 80 percent left over. So I lost 20 percent. So what I'd like for you to do is work on question three and four. Pause the video when you're done, start playing it, and I will go over these. In number three, the base is 0.94, so this is exponential decay. The initial value is two. The base is 0 0.94. To find the rate, I'm going to take that base Multiply it by 100 so I can convert it to a percent, 94%. There's 94% left over. I started at 100, now I'm at 94. I decreased by 6%. My decay rate is 6%. And for number four, the base is 1.04. So this is exponential growth because that's larger than 1. The initial value is 2.1. So, again, we're referring to this as the base. The base is 1.04. The decay rate, I'm going to take that base, convert it to a percent. I get 104%. So I started at 100. Now I'm at 104. This is a 4% exponential growth. All right, moving on to page nine. Now what you're going to get into is some context, some word problems that apply these concepts. So we're going to be trying to write an exponential function. And remember, the form is just y equals a times the base raised to the x power. We had been converting two percentages. Now we're going to go the opposite way. If we go from a percent to a decimal, we're going to divide by 100. All right, so here, just some terms that you want to be familiar with. Anything increasing could say increasing, accruing, growing, appreciating. Those words represent increasing. Decreasing terms, depreciate, decline, decrease, diminishing. If you see any of those terms, that means exponential decay. So this first one, increasing by 6%. We want to figure out what the rate is. So I'm going to convert 6% to a decimal. So I'm going to divide it by 100. That's 0 0.06. All right. 
wait, I want to take that back. I said before you always start at 100%. So if I increase by 6%, now I'm at 106%. Now I want to convert the 106 to a decimal. 106 divided by 100 is 1.06. So that growth rate would be 1.06. If I decrease by 7.5%, starting at 100%, minus 7.5%. Now I'm at 92.5%. Now I'm going to convert this percent. I know it has a decimal in it, but this is still a percentage. I'm going to divide by 100. And that's 0.925. So that would be our decay. So that would be the base. Accruing by 2.5%, so accruing is going up. So if I take that 100% plus the 2.5%, now I'm at 102.5%, and I'm going to convert that to a decimal, divide by 100. So 1.025 would be the base. The last one, pause the video, see if you could try it on your own. Diminishing means decreasing by 6.7%. So 100% minus the 6.7% is 93.3%. Convert this to a decimal, and you get 0.933. So that would be the base. On the bottom, now we're going to actually take this and create excuse me, a function. So you have a house that costs 200000 This is the initial value, the starting value. This is A. And it's going to appreciate. Appreciate means increase or growth in value by 3% per year. Write a function that models the cost of the house over time. X is going to be years. So X is years. Y is value. And they tell us that X is years, Y is value. So I'm going to take this 3%. I need to figure out the new base. Plus my, uh, let's start this way. You're always starting at 100. Plus 3% is 103%. And I'm going to convert that to a decimal. Just what I did above. Oops, can't see that. So this function is going to be y equals the initial value or the starting value, 200,000 times 1.03. That's the base to the x. Just checking, the base is bigger than 1. This represents exponential growth. Now, the second part of the question is find the value. If I'm finding a value, I'm trying to find y after 10 years. 10 years means x is 10. So y equals 200,000 times 1.03 to the 10th. And we would just plug this in our calculator using the little caret button. And it's going to give us this $268,783.28. So over the 10 years, this house gained about $69,000 in value. The last part, if the house was purchased in 2001, what is the value of the house in 2009? So asking what is the value, we still want to find why. In 2019, well... That's time in years. 18 years have passed from 2001 to 2019. So it's going to be similar to what we did in the previous example. Y equals 200,000 times 1.03. Now we're going to raise that to the 18th power. Power meaning exponent. Plug that in the calculator and that's going to give us $340,486.61. Okay, at this point, I'm going to stop the video and I'll make a new video for the second part of the lesson.